Today at EMTB Review, I'm going to share with you some key insights and observations on my long-term test e-bike, the Trek Fuel EXE 9.9 .9 XDR Edition. Okay, about a month ago, I did a first impression review on the lower price version, the Trek Fuel EXE 9.7 Edition. Just click on my review here. Pretty cool observations uh, and ride that I did. And so I said, man, I got to get this bike long-term. Uh, you know, this is, this is the future. And lo and behold, they sent me the expensive one. I would complain, but they said that's all they had. 9.9 <laughs> exterior .9 edition. It's not what I wanted, but I'm discovering a lot of cool stuff about it. So I got to share with you guys. So, the, so they sent me the XDR, which is cool, but then it has all these electronic gizmos around it. And uh, I was like taken aback. I don't like, I don't like the access and access dropper and all that. But uh, this is pretty cool. So the first observation is it's under 40 pounds for a medium without pedals. And that's, that's an amazing feat, 360 watt hour battery for this e-bike. And I took the cage out, 40 grams for this. It looks a lot better without it, you know. Uh, a nice open openings on this space. And they have something very cool here. I also took this out, this is about 85 grams. And what this is is a, is a multi-tool similar to the Specialized, the tool itself, the Allen is in a cage, uh, but it has a chain breaker, so very cool, very stealthy. Next observation, I wasn't so jazzed about, it had all these blinking lights on the shocks. On the front fork, on the rear shock, there's a blinking light. Also on the tire valve, there's a blinking light. I'm like, ah, oh, nah, they gave me that flight attendant stuff and uh, electronic gizmos that I don't need on an e-bike. Uh, I'm not super jazzed on flight attendant and the Fox version live valve because on e-bikes, I don't need it to, to lock out on me uh, and, 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 and save me uh, a couple of ounces of energy. You know, that's good for a World Cup race, but for an e-bike, it doesn't do much, in my opinion. Uh, but it turns out it's not flight attendant. It turns out it's something called AirWiz. AirWiz is a real-time air pressure monitoring system on the front fork on the rear shock, and then on the two tires. This one's called Tire Whiz, Tire with a Y, probably invented by the Brits. So I'm all like, whoa, whoa, I don't want that. But then when I actually op open the app, Trek has an integrated app that puts it all in one, in one box. And it says, it looks something like this. It says your front pressure is 25, your rear is 22, uh, on your tires, on your, sh on your rear shock is 168, and your front fork is 79. You are good to ride. It determines if you're good to ride based on uh, what is advisable uh, on, on, uh, for your body weight in this bike. But if you don't like that, then you set your own parameters on what's defined by good to ride. And actually, this is actually really important. This is the only thing I'd really tell uh, my friends uh, who ride full suspension bikes. Check your tire pressure. You know, check your fork pressure, uh, especially if they're losing air. Uh, and a lot of them do over time, especially if you change elevation and whatnot. So this is handy. I go, boom, so amazing. So I'm so impressed. Now I'm going to feel bad for my other bikes. Uh, and the cool discovery that I have is, you know, when you're uh, adjusting your, your, your rear, you're adding pressure to your rear, rear shock, when you, when you push in the valve, it loses pressure but you don't know how much. When you take off the valve from your shock pump, it loses pressure again. <laughs> and, and you're aiming for that short pssst, other than the pssst, and you're like, oh shit, I gotta do it over. It can lose as much as 50 or 100 pounds of pressure on how you take that thing off. So it's a pain in the neck, and you have no idea how much it lost. This thing will tell you in real time, hey, you lost two pounds, or you lost you know, 40 pounds of, of pressure. All right, another cool observation is the computer is on the top tube. And when you turn it off, it's kind of all black. You can hardly tell uh, there's a computer in there. It's just stealthy. So that's really cool. And as you know, with a Fuel EXE, you can't tell there's a motor. There's the other thing. The motor is so tiny that it's hidden by the crank. You can't tell there's anything in there. No human can tell. It says EXE, just cover the E. Just say Fuel EX. And then on the non-drive side, the you could see 
it's about this big, the motor's about this big, and what they did is they got the biggest crank available, the biggest carbon crank available from E13, and it actually masks it. From some angles, you cannot see what's going on. I'm curious, I might paint this, uh, you know, black heat sinking motor uh, yellow, mustard yellow, to even hide it some more. Another observation is the, has a minnow link, and it ships in high. Um, I thought they shipped in low, so that, uh, that, that definitely will be adjusted on my bike. And then on the not good observations, you know, it has 30, it's 13,000 for, 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 uh, for this bike, but it has the bond trigger dropper post, and it's not that good. The, the, the range of it is not so good. The fit, I can only do 150, but here I'm able to do uh, with a one up, I want a 180. So huge, gonna be a huge upgrade for me. Why? Because this is so much more efficient in stack height, meaning height from the collar to the, to, the, uh, to the rails, and also the insert height. Very efficient, these one-ups. And even if they don't fit, you can shim it so you get the exact drop that's allowed for uh, your leg extension. So there you go. The other trick up this bike sleeve, I'm not sure if you noticed, not sure you can see it right now, is these pedals have a light as well. So what these pedals are, are Garmin power meter pedals. Why is this important? Because I'm about to embark on something really cool. I'm gonna compare all these bikes, you know, lightweight e-bikes, heavy e-bikes, uh, check their power and range for my, my body. And uh, what I'm gonna do with the help of these pedals is I'm gonna eliminate my, my pedal input. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that a constant, take that away as a variable. No one has been ever, ever been able to compare you know, what's the power of this compared to a Levo SL or an Orbea Rise? Because there's always rider input, right? And it's always variable. There's so many variables. So I'm gonna take out all the variables. And the biggest variable is how much does the rider help? So I'm gonna just put that at a constant using the power meter pedals and uh, we'll see what happens. So there it is, a very exciting bike indeed because it's got power, but it doesn't have a lot of the baggage, a lot of the uh, the fear, you know, the, the things that slow an e-bike down. It's not really here. 39 pounds for this, for this bad boy and uh, really a supportive suspension. XTR brakes, it's pretty darn good. Thanks for time.